New products this week. Just a little bit of a reminder. We're shipping safe. We're shipping smart. And um, a diagnostic lab says we're <laughs> COVID free. We've swabbed ourselves. So, Both inside and out. <laughs> yeah. All right. So first okay. up, these are some updates. Coming soon, uh, we have a Raspberry Pi 4 kit. We are a little behind on our Pi bundles. I know we're still selling the Pi 3 bundle. Uh, we're going to get a uh, budget pack bundle with Raspberry Pi and that Raspberry Pi. You can sign up if you want to uh, get notified when they're ready. comes with just the basics, uh, a tea cobbler, some cables, a Raspberry Pi case, SD card, and power supply. Next up. Also coming soon, uh, and we'll show this off, we'll have a demo next week. This is the 2.7 inch sharp memory display. Um, if you have seen our smaller sharp memory display, well this is the same thing but bigger. 400 by 240 pixels, monochromatic, kind of daylight readable. Um, this is the same display used in uh, the Playdate. So if you've seen this really cool cranking game, handheld game, same display. Uh, we have both Arduino and CircuitPython and Python code. So stay tuned. Uh, you can sign up and get notified when it's in stock. Um, okay, next up we've got a shipment of Pimeroni stuff. So first up is this Enviro Plus Featherwing. This is a jam-packed Featherwing goes on any feather and it gives you a gas sensor that's the thing on the left it has a reset button on the right it has an analog microphone it has a bme 280 that's a barometric pressure uh humidity and temperature sensor as well as a light sensor and there's also like a little screen in the middle so you can plot your data also there's stuff on the bottom i think right yeah um there's a little power circuitry on the bottom in the connector and then there's also a connector for a uh, PM 2.5 um, air quality sensor. They often have these like little uh, connectors. Um, in this case, we're just showing it off without, and then I've got it on the overhead. It's a feather wing. That's right, it's a feather wing. So I just have it. Uh, you can use it with a feather. Auto focus, and then it's showing. This is the demo um, in I think Circuit Python focus lock. Uh, it shows the temperature, the humidity, and the barometric pressure. And then if I blow on it. You can see my, uh, my breath caused an increase in humidity, which is good. It means I'm alive uh, and I have water inside me. Good. Good. Uh, so check this out. It goes on any feather. Um, it's pretty easy to use. And um, there's Arduino libraries for a lot of these, even though um, Pymerity doesn't write Arduino code. There's a BME280 library, this display. Uh, you know, our GFX library supports it. Um, did it for the gas sensors, analog, and this light sensor, and the microphone. So uh, even though the code is in CircuitPython, because uh, they're Pythonistas, um, you can use this in Arduino as well. Okay, next up. Okay, next up, we've got a couple of hats. So let me, hold on, i got to rearrange myself here. Um, okay, so this is the automation hat. So if you'll notice, um, you know, all these products from Pymerony, they're starting to come with little displays. So this is an upgrade on an older product that they had. It was the Automation Fat. But now it has, uh, first of all, it has like this you know, gigantic terminal block. And it has a little screen um, and a relay. And it's designed for, you can do analog reads. It has an analog to digital converter on the back. Um, it can also control um, high voltage device. I think it's got a, uh, a Darlington buffer. It also has a relay that can control up to 2 amp, 2, 24 volt uh, power. So hold on, let me. Oh, I forgot to plug this in, so I can't do this. Um, all right, I'll plug this in later. Uh, I'll show a demo. I think we have a demo for the other ones. For this one, I don't have a demo. Cool. That's fine. I'll keep going. Okay, keep going. So the next one is uh, the other hat we got. This one, this one we have yeah. a demo. Um, it's the Scroll Hat Mini. And uh, this one is also an update to the scroll hat from Pimeroni, the earlier version. Uh, this time they added four buttons on the front, which is really handy. You can see the A, B, X, Y buttons. Um, it has an I squared C to LED driver, and it can do um, multiple, uh, like eight bit brightness level per LED. So that can be really handy when um, uh, you want to do like diffuse effects. And also you can change, of course, the brightness of your text. So here's just a little animation. Uh, they have Python code for this display. Uh, so you can uh, scroll away to your heart's content. 
Yeah. Well, Charlie flexed. And what I'm going to do now is, you want me okay. to hold that computer for you? Yeah, or? hold on. No, no, I got it. So okay. let's go here. All right, we're going to do I'm, I'm going to try to do this demo. Yeah. So. Here you go. Thank you. Up. Hold on. It I takes a team. Hi. That's it all working. Hello. Why is it working? Oh. Well, it just resumed from being, is it on the same network it was yeah. before? Yeah. Well, some days live demos work and some days they don't. Yeah, this computer went to sleep and when it came back. Okay. I think I think we'll just do a, we'll do a demo maybe next week. Sure. Let's have All this. good. The demo is That's exactly, why I have the it's videos. It's this, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah this, this is what it is. Okay, cool. Okay, next cool. Up. Next up, uh, we've got this silicone ear saver. Uh, we made these, but uh, the, the industry has caught up with us. Um, so now you can uh, get these like pre-molded silicone ear savers. They're handy if you're wearing a mask all day, like we do, because that way you don't have yep. your ears chafe. And let me just say, wearing a mask mm -hmm. works. Trust us, we've been living through this for six months. Yeah, now. and if you're like, ooh, my ears are chafy, well, yeah. this is why you would get an ear saver. Next up. Okay, next up, we've got the uh, BME 680. This is a sensor that we've had um, in stock for a while. It has pressure, humidity, temperature, and gas sensing. Um, we've revised this to now be STEMA QT compatible, so you see it's got these nice plug-in cables that you can uh, plug and play for I squared T support. Um, it's, you know, mechanically a little different looking, but it has the same pinout, same code, same software. So if you would uh, like to add a quick plug and play sensor to any of our STEM QT capable boards, then this is an easy way to do it. It's got level shifting and everything. So you can use it with Arduino, Raspberry Pi, CircuitPython, whatever. Get environmental data, super easy. Coming soon, the next volume of Make Make 74, we're stocking it because it has all these things about Python and hardware. So sign up. Inclusive cover model. It'll be here soon. We're just going to have a limited number of these, and then they are gone. Next up. Okay. Next up, we have uh, the uh, from SparkFun. It's a quick I squared C mux. It's a cute little board. It has a, let's see, what was the name of it? The TCA... 548A, which is a 1 to 8 I squared C mock. So this is handy when you have um, multiple I squared C devices that share the same address, but you want to use them together. And, you know, sometimes you want to use multiple of the same sensor, for example. You can't change the address. What do you do? Well, an I squared C mux will solve your problem. And we've got Python code and Arduino code for this chip already. We just like um, the format. It's very uh, plug and play, easy to use with quick or STEM QT boards. Um, as you can see in demo photo, and I also have it on the overhead. I can show it really fast. Um, this, these two are connected through, so you can chain them, and then you get eight different outputs, and you can just plug and play sensors. Like, for example, let's say you wanted multiple of those BME 680 sensors. You can plug up to eight of them. Uh, normally, you wouldn't be able to do that with I2C. Normally, um, you're limited because you can only have one device per I2C address. All right. Okay. Next up. Okay, next up, uh, we've got this um, hat, hacker hat. So this is, Pamani's come out with a couple similar items, but this one kind of plugs into a Raspberry Pi and lets you connect two of those like Pi Zero shaped add-ons, which are like sometimes called mini hats or fats, or I call them bonnets. Um, and you can have two of them at the same time. And this demo I actually can show because it, it doesn't have to be working. Oh yeah? <laughs> yeah. Um, so you see here, I've got two bonnets, uh, connected up, Let's unplug this, and, um, they're both plugged into this hat expander. As long as there's no, uh, pin incompatibilities, you can plug in two bonnets and have them running at the same time. Just want to be careful when plugging it. And then this comes with nice standoff, so it sits like nice solidly. Um, just watch out, it's a little bit wider than a Raspberry Pi because two of these is, it's, this is not one half of a Raspberry Pi, it's like 0.6% or 60% the width. So if you have um, both of them plugged in. One thing I actually like to do with this is I, I plug in whatever hat I'm working on here, and then I can um, use this to do like debug checking and the pinout is available down here to uh, view so that makes it really easy to be like oh what's going on with like pin 4 and I can probe pin 4 um, while I'm debugging the software so this is a very handy little debug board okay next up wires wires <laughs> yeah well I like wires 
Um, by popular demand, we have um, silicone wires um, that we've uh, that we've stopped. We've had them um, in plug, plug, and socket, socket, and now we have option number three, which is plug and socket. These are extension wires. So they've got a socket on one end, 0.1 inch spacing, plug on the other end, uh, and these are silicone wires. So they're high temperature. They're very durable. Um, people like these. They are quite a bit more expensive, um, but they will withstand accidental heating. Um, they can be bent back and forth without cracking. Much better compared to PVC. Also, they can be used, you know, if, if you are in a cold area, uh, PVC usually gets a little hardened. Um, the silicone will do the job nicely. Okay. And the star of the show tonight, besides our community, our customers, our squeaky clean facility that's COVID-free, yeah. is the Think Ink E Ink Bonnet. Yes. This is a long time coming. I think I designed this like three years ago, but uh, it's finally in the store. Um, and you came up with a cool logo for it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we wanted to have something that illustrated what this is because it's not just e-ink. It's more than e-ink because Lady Ada designed some cool things into it. Yes. What did you design into this to make it? This is a thinking person's e-ink <laughs> display. Okay, first up, it's got some buttons in the front. Uh, what I really like about, uh, here I can go to the overhead, what I like about uh, e-ink products is that uh, I actually don't have to worry about the demo working or not because it's on <laughs> all the time. Yeah. It stays lit, which is nice. And this is actually from uh, like a couple days ago. Yeah, this, this, this just isn't a regular old e-ink display though. It does more. It does more. Okay. Yeah. So um, it's a 250 by uh, 122 pixels, so it's a high resolution monochrome display. Um, we've got... Python code for it, so it's very easy to use with your Raspberry Pi or other single board computer. You've got two buttons on the front, so you can select different modes. Um, on the bottom, we have a Stemma QT connector, which is very handy. Um, all of these converter and circuitry you need. And we have two guides that we wrote. One, you can see here, is an open weather demo. So uh, you just need to get a free open weather key, which is free. Uh, plug it into our code and it'll show you uh, the weather. It'll update it every few minutes. We also have a great guide by Melissa um, on using, uh, to make it a calendar display. It'll tell you the next event you have, what time, next event, meeting, whatever. And it syncs with your Google Calendar. And she shows how to get permission for your Google Calendar and then you put that in the code uh, safely and securely um, by giving like a, a one-time uh, authorization code. And then it will um, grab the latest, or sorry, the upcoming event and display it on your e-ink display. And we're also, I think Brent said he wanted to also um, do the pie hole project, but with e-ink. So yeah, we'll cool. do that as well. So there you go. We've got Think Ink. It's the star of the show. Nice new products. Mm -hmm.